My name is Edwin Rubis, and I am currently serving a 480 month uh, sentence in federal prison for a nonviolent marijuana crime. I was arrested back in 1998, and uh, when the DEA and uh, federal authorities uh, raided my house, they didn't find any drugs, they didn't find any guns, and they didn't find any money. But I was still charged with conspiracy because other individuals that had been arrested for drug charges started cooperating uh, with the government and uh, DEA and told them my name and said that I had association with them in the past. It's very frustrating and demoralizing uh, to know that society uh, almost <laughs> as, as a whole, I guess you could say, has the embrace of making a, a, a cannabis uh, legal and to see all this profit making from cannabis uh, businesses and dispensaries. And then again, you know, under the federal level, it's still illegal. And that is the reason why I'm still in prison. But during my teenage years and all the way into the 90s, I struggled with drug addiction and, um, and alcohol. Listen, and it's something that I couldn't shake off. And, I, you know, I went through rehab on numerous occasions. And I also ended up in jail for uh, doing uh, things because of my drug addiction. But at the same time, I also wanted to lead a responsible life. And I would work. I had a steady job. But because of my drug addiction, uh, my jobs would not last very long. I was also involved, uh, you know, with people that were actually consuming and selling drugs. So one day I saw an opportunity to make an extra buck or extra money. And um, I ended up losing a large amount of drugs. And that's how I got involved into the drug trade, uh, trying to pay back the debt that I had incurred uh, because of uh, those uh, lost drugs. When I first came to prison, you know, I was extremely depressed and I didn't know uh, what to do with my life. I mean, it seems like that was the end of the road. And I tried to commit suicide and I didn't know how to handle, uh, you know, having received 40 years in federal prison and having lost my wife, having lost my children and having lost my freedom. Uh, but he was there in the midst of that depression, in the midst of that dark period of my life. Something happened, something clicked within my soul, something happened within myself, and I was able to see life from a different perception. I call it a spiritual intervention, I call it a lot of different things, but it's something that happened, and I believe it was a miracle from God that revealed unto me that even though I was sitting behind prison walls, uh, my life was still worth living. And it was from there on that I picked myself back up, you know, out of my depression. And I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I began to embark in a rehabilitation process that basically uh, is going on until this day. I'm now using what I've learned uh, to mentor all the inmates in here that deal with uh, drug addiction and substance abuse and trauma and other self-destructive uh, behavior. So, yes, I've accomplished some things, I guess you could say, um, that I will call it a redemption in some ways. The hard thing that I, have in, that I have gone through is losing my family, losing my children, losing my ex-wife. And, you know, I think that's what hurt the most. And specifically, and it's still hurting now because my, one of my sons, about to be 25 years old, is currently homeless. And uh, he doesn't want anyone to help him because of his mental issues. And he's been in jail twice. And my hands are tied. There's nothing I can do. I cannot go out there and go look for him and try to help him. You know, and the irony is that I know all these things that I've learned here behind prison walls, you know, how to counsel people, how to mentor people, and I can't even mentor my son, which is out there in the streets, you know, homeless and without direction, without anyone basically giving him a hand to say, hey, this is what you can do to get out of this. So the only thing available now, or the only thing that I can look forward to is clemency from President Biden. President Biden, look at my case. Demonstrate mercy and empathy. My case deserves a second chance. My life deserves a second chance. My family deserves a second chance. Please be merciful unto me. I am really ashamed of my past crimes. I really regret my criminal behavior. I feel very remorseful about the things and the choices that I made to hurt other people, to hurt myself. Give me an opportunity to be able to change my life from the way it was to the way it can be as a contributing member of society.